Hey y'all, it's Betsy with Happily Ever After Etc. and welcome back to another Cricut project. So today we are going to be using some smart vinyl to make a stencil for a chess or checkered board. So my mom has a small wooden antique table that has seen better days. It needed a little TLC and because the wood was good but not great, we decided to paint it instead of restaining it. We went with a light bluish green color and now because it is a perfect square, she wants to put a chess or checkered board on top and make it a gaming table. We looked into buying a stencil, but they're about $30, $40 for the size we wanted, which is 16 by 16 at the smallest. Uh, and we didn't really want to spend that kind of money on a stencil we'll most likely use once. I don't think we're going to be making a lot of gaming tables. <laughs> So instead, we decided to break out the Cricut and make our own stencil. We've done this several times. I actually did a large scale honeybee, really cute uh, stencil on a round dining room table. And so we knew we could do it. Just had to grab a uh, chess or checkerboard SVG. And here's the kicker. Even with smart vinyl that can get up to 13 by 13 inches wide um, and go as long as your roll is long, still can't cut a 16 by 16. So we're gonna go ahead and grab that design, splice it down the middle so we have two halves of a stencil. Since a chest or checkered board is repeating, we can easily uh, split that design in two. We're going to cut it in two different pieces and then stencil it as one piece. Now you can use stencil vinyl for a project like this. I have lots of stencil vinyl. I've used it plenty of times. It's great. I love it for small projects, but I don't have it in smart vinyl, which I need for that 13 by 13 wide. And of course, smart vinyl, you can cut long designs. So since this baby is 16 inches, not 12, I didn't want to have to use a long cutting mat. It just made more sense to use a removable vinyl, smart vinyl, than our sticker vinyl. Either one will work. You could use a 12 by 24 inch cutting mat with your stencil vinyl and it would be just fine. So we're going to go ahead, hop into Cricut Design Space. I will show you really quick how I spliced apart my SVG to get our two halves of our chessboard and then we will get cutting. Let's open up our computer and get started. In space, you can go ahead and upload your chessboard SVG. Um, if you don't know how to do that, I will link a little video down below that will show you how, but it, basically you're going to click upload and then select that SVG. That is going to load in these two boards, which we don't actually need because we are going to be cutting a 16 by 16 chess or checkerboard, which is too big to cut on a single mat. And so instead of simply grabbing this little checkerboard here, cutting it straight out of our vinyl and going on about our lives, we actually are going to have to splice this piece in two. We're going to have to use two different stencils to get the same effect as one. So I went ahead and I picked the board that has a uh, line around the outside as opposed to the other one that for some reason doesn't want to there we go, be selected and is lineless around the outside. I just thought it would look better on our table to have that border. So what I've done is I've sliced it into two pieces so that we can lay this side of the stencil down. We'll paint everything up to this portion and a little bit of this bottom and top line here and then we will take the second piece, lay it on top once that paint has dried, and we will paint all the way up to this section and everything will overlap. We will have all of our lines in place, but you have to have that little bit of the next section to line up with what's already painted, or you will start having problems uh, trying to line up just by sight going off the edges of those squares. Now, because this is a uh, floating kind of pattern here, once we weed this design, all of these squares are individual pieces. It's only this outside part connected by the line that's really one piece. All these middle parts can come apart. So as we're lining this up, 
if these middle three squares become a hindrance, we can take those out and line it up solely off the top and bottom portions. We'll just have to see when we get to that, uh, how it kind of, you know, what's best, what's working well, and move on from there. But for today, we are going to go ahead and cut these out. We are using my Maker 3 and Smart Vinyl. That way we do not have to use a cutting mat. If you do not have a Maker 3 or an Explore Air 3, you can use any of your other larger machines. You'll just need a longer 12 by 24 inch cutting mat. This will not fit on a 12 by 12 unless you cut it into four sections. And there's no reason to do that now that we have longer cutting formats. So I'm going to go ahead and hit make it. I am cutting smart vinyl, so I'm going to select without mat. If you are using a machine that you need a mat for, make sure to collect, collect, select on mat. There we go. So as you can see, it has lined these babies up one and then the other. So this top one here is really about the max size that we can cut comfortably out of our smart vinyl. And I did that on purpose when I was making my pattern uh, or slicing apart the pattern. I uh, made sure it was about 11.5 inches minimum uh, or maximum, which is really the best solution. So our overall mat, we need a 13 wide by 34. And smart vinyl is a little wider than um, your 12 by 12 cutting board, which is why I decided to use Smart Vinyl. So let's go ahead and select continue. It is going to connect to our maker, maker three. Perfect. We're going to select Smart Vinyl. I am using a removable Smart Vinyl. You do want to use either removable Smart Vinyl or if you have it, um, the smart stencil is even more preferable, but I don't have a roll of that and removable tends to work just fine. So I'm going to select more, load that fine point blade and we will go ahead and cut this. So I will meet you at the Cricut. All right, so I already have this set up. You can see I am using a roll of removable smart vinyl. I have loaded it straight into our Cricut uh, roll holder here, which just makes working with those longer rolls of vinyl easier. We are going to use our fine point blade and click start. It's going to pull the vinyl all the way through and make sure we have enough material. This is a brand new roll, so of course there's more than enough. Perfect. long stencil. So now we have all our material here. We'll just let that kind of lay on this side of the machine and we're going to hit go.
All right, so it is finished. And before we go ahead and inject it from the machine, I'm gonna go ahead and slice across our material. And now we can remove this completely. It is all finished. So we'll just lift it up, move it out of the way. And now we can eject our stencil. Perfect. Now, this is going to be a pretty easy uh, project to weed. It's really just squares. So the main thing you want to do is make sure we're going obviously opposite every other piece, just like a chessboard or a checkerboard. And we're going to start with that top corner, which should be weeded. So use our weeding tool. We will come in here and simply remove that top square. Dun da da da. So now we're just going to go every other square all the way across. cut apart both sides of the stencil when we get to the bottom. But other than all the way across, the only other thing we really need to do is a... Uh, got worried that I was cutting into the actual part of the stencil, but I'm not. I didn't think I was, but you know, you still get worried. All right, so. So big, you guys. Such a big stencil. Let me grab my scissors. There we go. So here's the bottom. We're going to cut that right here. Perfection. And there we go, the bottom of the stencil. So, dun, da, da, dun. you do need to slice the two stencils apart. It is a, is a pretty slim area right there to slice. See right, right in between. So I'm going to go ahead and slice that apart. I'm going to save all this area on the right that is not cut into. If that's a pretty big chunk. I'll be able to use that for another project. No reason to waste it. So give me just a second. I'm going to go ahead and weed this completely and then I will meet y'all out by the table so that we can actually lay it on. We'll do our uh, transfer sheet out by the table. That way we don't have to carry a full transfer sheet with vinyl outside. All right. So it's not ideal, but we have our stencil, we have our table. We now need to use transfer tape to transfer the stencil to the table. And because it is essentially going to make it a large sticker, I don't want to do this at home and then have to bring a giant sticky back sticker all the way over here. So I'm gonna roll out our transfer tape, lay it over one half of the design, and then see, we may have to do two pieces of transfer tape side by side. We may transfer half the design and then the other. I'm not 100% sure yet. So, make sure there's no dog hair on this because real because it definitely on there. Mom cleaned off the table, so this is our table. I don't know what kind of table it is. It's the little. side table. This is 
always the hardest step is just getting the transfer tape started. Right, so go ahead and get. You might need to look at some um like a paper plate and the stencil brushes. It should be in the back craft room in one of those drawers. Yeah, they're like flat and round. The, yeah, the round ones. But not the wax brushes, just they're... Yes, I don't know. I'll have to look see what I can find. Okay. Well, when she brings the wrong thing, she'll have to go back. <laughs> so I know she's going to listen. All right, so we're going to bring just a little bit off, and then we'll start to roll it down, making sure we're going over the side here. Use our little scrapey tool. Now, I'm just gonna continue pulling a little and scraping a little, making sure we get out all the bubbles as we go. it with the bottom here. Make sure to dog ear this next piece so we don't have that problem. are wax brushes so like i'm saying ones I they're small well we can't use those for stencil that's the only ones i have okay, then i'll go look and i'll find the other one. all right so we've got our stencil here we're going to do one side and then the other side because this is a perfectly square board we know that four spots in is the center four spots in this piece directly right here is the center. So we're going to go ahead and line that up with the center of the square and then stick this down. So here's the question is... You want me to measure the center? Yeah, we can go ahead and mark it with a pencil. That would be wise. The question is, is the stencil going to come up easily or is it gonna be a pain in the rear? I gotta go with, oh, here's the fit for measuring tape. Okay, go ahead and get a pencil and we'll do it. We're gonna do one side and then the other side. I think that'll be easier. right here this one square isn't quite laying down so before I keep pulling I gotta make sure that's laying down properly we have to do that all the way across so I'm gonna go ahead and move to the side to finish this part and let mom mark the center of the table okay exactly 22 and a half 
We have 11 and a quarter. Mark the corners 16 and 16 too, if you can. Or the sides, maybe, so we can make sure it's laying on there straight. You know? Okay. Well, if you mark the center and then you measure out 16 from the center on all four sides. Not 16, 8. You know what I meant? Yeah, 8. Then that should give us a guide for where on the sides these squares should lie, you know? All right at three and a quarter. So here is our stencil on our transfer tape. Go ahead and point out the exact center, Mom. On the stencil, Mom. That's the table. Oh, I'm sorry. There you go. I didn't know. So go ahead and we'll line that up. And then where's the outside marks need to be straight to? Here. Here. Does that look straight? Yeah. All right, so press down with your finger right on the middle part. There you go. Now smooth it towards the, the sides, smoothing the stencil down. Perfect. Perfect. Now put it in the center and push towards the center in where I have it. The center of this side. Yeah, like that. All right, and now go towards the corners. And that way we know everything lays flat. Grab the scraper that's down there for me, please. All right, so now that it's all smoothed on and we know that it's straight to the marks that she made and in the middle, we're gonna go always from the middle and smooth it out. And I'm just doing it very lightly since we are going to remove this, we don't need it to be permanently bonded, but we need it to be smooth enough that none of the paint will seep under the edges as we paint. Okay. So let's go ahead and see if that's enough and if the vinyl will stay down. Yeah. Help. Yeah, come over here, Mom. And as I pull, just push, on the push down all the edges so that they're smooth and bonded. Okay. Because it's it's trying to pull them up as we go since we didn't push it down as much as we could have. And we want to keep this piece of transfer tape nice because there is no reason we cannot reuse it for the other half. This is a big piece of transfer tape. There's no reason to waste a second piece the same size. Transfer tape will still be Tapey. pretty sticky for th usually three or four pieces. So it's, it's more a question of, you know, you don't want to store it necessarily off the roll. 
But if you're doing three or four pieces all at once, I know. Smooth it straight, yeah. I'm not quite sure why that's doing that. Do you have like a. You had that thing over there. You bought it home, I think. I don't know what that thing over there is. That mister thing. Yeah, none of that makes any sense. Okay. I need like a weeding tool, but I don't have one. This is essentially what I did to get it on the transfer tape, but in reverse. It's, once you get the corners down, the rest of the squares really kind of go on their own. You just might need to smooth them out. I just need to slice that. Yeah, that's what I was kind of thinking. A little exacto knife. This is why I did this over here instead of bringing it over with it on here like a giant sticker. <laughs> All right, mom's going to smooth that out. All right, so we've got our other half. Got to line it up. I was handing this to you. Okay, I didn't know. And then we will place it down. So we need it to line up along this edge, and these two sides should cross over this half, correct? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So. Right like that. Yeah. This isn't quite lined up here. Oops. That. What the hell? It's a square, Mom. Oh, the whole square. Or part of the square. Try not to say what the hell on camera. Excuse me. Excuse my friend. Okay. So make sure you're lining up the tips of the squares. There you go. Is that good? I think so. Alright, let it down. Line it up. Yeah. Line it okay. down. Now do what? I'll see. That's why I said lay it down. That's all scooched up. Something's wrong. It's this stuff. Okay. It's that stuff. Okay. Alright, now it's good. I'm sorry. It's okay. I'm not used to doing this. I know. Alright. Now the two halves are together. We should be good to go. So let's start peeling this back and see if it's going to participate, which so far it is. That's how it's supposed to come off. That one came off better. Whoa! You smoke one square too Pretty soon. Soon, yep. It was like, haha, <laughs> watch this sucker. Yep, one square. Get that corner smoothed out. No, you're not even touching it. Well, I, I didn't know what you were talking about exactly. I'm sorry. All right, so we've got lots of little bumps in this corner for some reason. Mm -hmm. I am going to go ahead and dispose of this as much as I hate to because there's no way I'll get it home. Right, we're just going to go ahead and like smooth it out because technically it's, it's a stencil. We only need this open square. Yeah, that's what so I was it doesn't too. matter as much as if we were putting this on as a permanent design. Right. So, all right, I'm going to start on this square. You start here. 
we're, we need to smooth over every single edge that paint might get under and just make sure it's sealed to the board. It really shouldn't be an issue, but since it is paint. Now what we were talking about when the camera was off was if you wanted to not make a stencil and you just wanted to put vinyl on here as your chest or checkerboard, that is 100% doable. You could do this out of permanent vinyl. You could put this on here. It could be finished right now. You could seal over the top with either a, a, a resin or you could have uh, sealed the paint beforehand and then put this directly over your polyurethane or your wax. Now the vinyl will not stick to wax as nicely as it would to like a polyurethane or a spirurethane or even resin, but any of those would be options. So we're going to go grab uh, some tape because mom wants to put a border around the outside since this will not be here once we're done. And um, we'll see. And then I will grab the paintbrushes and we will stencil. Be right back. All right, so we've decided to use this darker gray paint and our good stencil brushes are MIA. So we're just using some sponge brushes, which, you know, like there's nothing wrong with the sponge brush. You want to use a fairly dry brush for stenciling. You don't want a lot of paint and just go over the, the edges and the corners and work your way across the whole board. I'm not a professional stenciler by any means, but we've done a couple stencils. Yeah. That big honey one was probably our biggest Most. with the bee and that one turned out really good. Yeah. Two seconds. Hey, that was you, not me. I don't know. I just wasn't paying attention. I'm used not used to such a long brush. It's okay since we're gonna put a like a border, border around, around it, it eventually, but still. I don't know that we're gonna need two coats. I think one might be okay. I don't know, it's hard to say. It is hard to say. This is a chalk paint, so. It's gonna dry pretty it bad. It dries pretty matte and it dries pretty quickly. So by the time we're done, the first couple squares will be should be fairly dry and we should be able to tell how the coverage is. bad part of my brush is that it's long, but the good part is it does cover like a lot, the whole side of a square. Yeah. I took the smaller brush. Mom needs less agency of chaos as much as possible. She is scary with a brush. Hey. I didn't hear a denial. I am thorough. <laughs> Put it that way. Not saying I don't make mistakes, but I uh Yeah, I believe you're the one that got off out of the lines first. Typically make less chaotic mistakes. Hey, unless the paint police are gonna come pick me up. They are. I'm, I'm going not to too call worried them. about it. I say excuse me, I have an agent of chaos here. When I used Please to come remove her. Teach foil team. I used to tell everybody if not that bad, leave it. You're the one that has to be pleased. And well, the I mean, quilt police will not come pick you up. That's what they tell you in dance and cheerleading, you know, all those years is 
you're really the only one who ever knows if you make a mistake. Just keep going. So mom and I have been talking lately about needlepoint because I just started learning how to do embroidery and they're very similar. Um, but mom learned needlepoint from my great grandmother, her grandma, when you were in I was out of college in college in college. So how old were you like 20 something? 22, 23. So younger than I am. But Nana was about my age when she learned. Nana, I don't know when she learned, to be honest. She didn't do needlepoint when I was young. I think she learned fairly late in life. Yeah. I think she she learned in her 50s and 60s. I definitely get my creativity from mom, but then it skips a bit of a generation and uh well my mother's not creative was not creative at all yeah, zero percent but my father but grandpa was could have been creative just in a different way a different he wasn't a he was an electronics whiz and he, was he could a build com things computer whiz uh, yeah he could build he things. could look at something and know how it went together and how and it, it brain, worked it yeah. just like he saw blueprints he worked in on his electronics brain. so he he could do that and so he was creative, but not in a needle set point yeah, not embroidery crafty, crafty kind of way. We get that part of our brain directly from Nana. Oh, and my, my other grandma. grandmother, my father, my and mother's mother was yes. very creative. I never met her. So it's harder for me to relate to her. Yeah. Granny, she was a whiz at sewing. She could just look at a dress in a window and go home and make it. So I've been really enjoying the embroidery and I've been doing that more of a hobby than a something I necessarily want to film. But we've been thinking about mom's been thinking about teaching me needlepoint to do a bigger piece like the ones she and Nana used to make are quite big. We'll have to have to show you some sometimes some of the pieces they've made over the years may get a little bit more paint. Yeah, we definitely need more. So you guys would like um, a needlepoint lesson from mom in miniature, let me know. Maybe she can teach me some of the basics. <laughs> yeah, needlepoint's easy because you literally work on a piece of fabric that has holes in it and you come up and go down, come up and go down. That's it. It just, you just fill it in. But now you can get as fancy as you like because there's different stitches you can use. Now, when I was young, I learned how to... When I was a young whippersnapper. When I was in like sixth or seventh grade, I was sewing Barbie stuff since I was little. But when I was in sixth or seventh grade, I learned how to embroidery through Girl Scouts. How to embroidery. Yeah. How to Embroider. Do embroider work. Embroidery and I, work. I mean, mom taught me to sew when I was a little girl yeah. and to do cross stitch. So I'm not a stranger to a needle. I've, I feel like I, well, there's still, oh, yeah, her first couple of things that she made, she was like five or six. Mm -hmm. I used to really like making stuffed animals. Yeah. We'd buy those patterns mm -hmm. that would be a little stuffed animal and then I'd make those. You'd make them and oh, not had, had one, one on, on her, her bed, bed for so, years. So the day she died, really. Oh, she, she was so proud of that. You must have been five or six. When funny, I made her when I was five and it was. You were in second grade, so you must have been blue, seven. Blue and pink. And pink florals. And that was hard for you to give her, I know. I wanted to keep it so bad, but. She. She, she said, wanted she it. She asked for it. And, uh. You could never turn you her could. down. You could. She was just so excited. She gets so happy. She, she was a special lady. She was very special. So I was, I was telling Will about it. He wants to see the, the book of patterns. I was telling him you showed me. Oh yeah. Cause there's some in there. I think he would like. Yeah. I was telling him about them. And he said the Phoenix sounded really cool. Yeah. I think he would. I think he would like that. Will, my brother has his first house and has been decorating just recently f going into the world of decorating but of course his world of decorating is a, a lot different. very heavy on the zelda pokemon <laughs> world of warcraft scene yeah he has anime stuff and he's a math teacher he teaches like 
high school math. Algebra and physics and not physics, geometry, calculus. calculus. He's very smart and he really enjoys games. And he's working towards more, I don't want to say adult stuff, because a lot of mm-hmm. adults my age have that kind of stuff. I don't need to do this. But the pieces he does have are, um, they're nice. They're not kitty pieces, but they're just games. He has a nice quilt that I got him that's red and black. So he's been trying to add more. He just, you know, he, he just got his first nice couch and he's working on his first nice bedroom set. And so. He's definitely more of a minimalist. He is like major minimalist. So it's interesting, but if he likes that Phoenix, that would be a nice thing to make for him because he very rarely expresses interest in things. I was surprised that he liked those quilts. I was too, but he liked it and he has it hanging up, doesn't he? <laughs> yeah. Good he's staring a little, at us little through face the through the curtains. At my door that now has its own air conditioning hole. Yes. Mom's yard guy accidentally ran over a rock and it went through the front door. Flying through the front door. So we need to get that fixed. So bad. All right, we are going to go ahead and let this dry. I think it is going to need a second coat. So let's let it dry, and then we will come back and work on it. Ready? Yeah, I'm just trying to get all the spots that you can tell were missed. It's hard from this angle for me to tell what's missed or not. Yeah. All right, ready? All right, so it is dry, dry, dry. You can see that a lot of it is pretty good, but then quite a bit of it is little spots that are missing. So we're gonna do a second coat. It should and go fast. Should go pretty fast. And then hopefully uh, we can let that dry and take the stencil off completely. So let's go ahead and get it done because it is hot, hot, hot out here and I don't wanna be here anymore. Okay. Well, I don't wanna be outside. I want to be where the air conditioning is. I want to see, want to see the fan move. You like my song? Yeah, let's just be careful about this part right here. That has nothing to do with my song? Yeah, I'm ignoring your song. I don't want to hold that. You dripped up on me. Good. That's called karma. You should have been nice about my song. Gotta get this piece of hair off of me. Great, no hair on me. Do you think I should um cut back my Laura Pedlums? Yes. Now or in the It's up to you, but fall or next like March, April time. Like, when would the best time to do it be? Probably in the fall. I don't know how it blooms, but I don't... It blooms in the spring. It's one of the first things to bloom. Yeah, but I don't know... So I don't know if it blooms on new wood, old new wood, old, like... Or if it matters. Or if it matters. I'll have to Google it. Yeah, I don't... Because I don't want... It, it bloomed really pretty this year for the first time. So... I don't really want to sacrifice that, but it's also, it's, out of control. it's getting too big and it's starting to overcrowd like some of the other stuff. You're talking to the wrong person about overcrowding. Well, I don't mind overcrowding. Like, I don't know. I watched a video once about cottage gardens and the lady was like, my favorite thing about cottage gardens is that none of the spatial rules apply. You can just put as much as you want. But. And that is true. But the problem is, if you do that, it will just turn into survival of the fittest. And the most vigorous plant. Oops. I got it on there. Will win, you know? Like with the lantana and the super bells. It's okay. 
I'm not too worried about it because we are going to put a stripe. Yeah. But. But if you're not going to put a stripe, you could make that black border a bit thicker if you're using a Cricut Maker 3 or an Explore Air 3 that can cut up to 13 inches. I made the overall design um, 16, and so I cut it almost in half, which made one side smaller than the other. Okay. And so I could have done it more evenly and then made a bit of a bigger border around the outside. But Did you do this one no. again? Huh? No. Not yet. Okay. But uh, I didn't adjust it at all. I just purchased the stencil and then used it how it was other than splicing it down the middle. I was going to make my own. It's just squares. I could have easily done it. But I found a stencil. I found this stencil right. for. Measurements? No, it's an SVG, Mom. Oh. Okay. You make it whatever measurements you want. Oh. It's digital. I, it was just already done and it was a dollar. So I was like, it saves an hour of work. Your time is worth more my, than My dollar. time is worth more than a dollar. Exactly. If it had even been five or six dollars, I might have done my own. Because I could have done it faster than an hour. Doing the squares isn't hard. It's getting the proportions right. For a dollar, it just wasn't worth worrying about it, you know? No. He can hear you inside or out here and Biddy inside and goes, My I favorite girl. I want to be where the Biddy is. He does love him some Biddy. Oh, she's his favorite. I don't know why he likes her so much. All right, I think that's pretty good coverage. So we're gonna give it in this heat, like five minutes, and then we'll take the stencil off. Yeah. All right, y'all, so it is dry, dry, dry. We are gonna start taking the stencil off to see how these lines look. And then probably tomorrow after all this paint has cured, we're gonna come around and we'll just freehand, probably with some tape, a border around the side, so. Where's your phone, Mom? Because I want to take some pictures of taking off the stencil. Here. I might be able to get it from that spot. I got it right here. your hand real quick. This is going to be beyond where we wanted to put a line. But we couldn't paint over it with green paint, green paint mm -hmm. if we need to, yeah. There was a few spots where this outside border was not quite as a Effective, as, effective as our paint brushes, but we'll just go over those if we need to. So, 
Now we are going to have to individually take all these middle squares off and that is going to take a second. The main goal is to be going to be not to mess up, mess up the table. Oh, I wish I had brought my like some really pointy tweezers. Maybe a little needle would be better. There's one. This one, this one. But it worked perfectly as a stencil. All the edges are coming up really crisp. I was going to say, you're doing that on like every single square. I didn't realize what was happening. I, I didn't know what was happening. I thought my I was finger. going insane. No, my finger. I'm I was so like, is sorry. that just a highlight? Like, is that the light? No, we're going to have to uh, touch that up. Oh, obviously, I didn't It's realize. okay. I could not figure out what it was. That's why I was going like this. I thought it was like just a glare or something of the light. Oh, it's Mom. My fancy new nails. I just got her nails done today. I obviously did not. I got them done yesterday. Same thing. Different day. I'm really scratching in and out. There you go. It's kind of hard to get past the paint. Yeah, that's why I thought a needle might be better. Well, we'll do a little touch up, but for the most part, that stencil was pretty quick to make and uh, pretty easy to use. Way better than the $30 or $40 ones that you can buy that are reusable since we're not going to be making a million of these game tables. True. So we'll do some touch up, we'll put the border, and then we're going to seal the whole thing in. But it looks pretty I think good. It looks pretty good. I hope you guys liked this video. I will try to put some shots at the end of the finished table when it is all pretty and ready to go. Without my fingernail scratches. Without the fingernail scratches. I but can't believe I did that to like four of them. I'm very four impressed. You were very thorough. Yes. But right. for now, we are going to go ahead and be finished. So we will see you all in the next video. Bye. Bye.